What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Milo and I do travel and lifestyle vlogs. And today we are in the main train station here in Rome and we're heading to Pisa and Florence in a one day trip. And that's exactly what I'm gonna show you guys in this video. But before we head anywhere, if you haven't done so yet, hit the subscribe button, activate the bell so you guys get notified when all my videos come out. Are you guys ready? Let's go. If you have a day to spare in Rome, I recommend hopping on a train for a day trip to Pisa and Florence. The train ride from Rome to Pisa is about two hours and 15 minutes, and the ticket cost us 20 euros per person. We just made it to Pisa's central station and from here over to the Leaning Tower of Pisa it's about a 25-30 minute walk. Located in the Tuscany region, the city of Pisa is best known around the world for its famous and iconic Leaning Tower. It has an approximate population of 90,000 people and the city's train station is called Pisa Central. Alright, so there are plenty of things to see here in Pisa, but of course if you only have half a day like Daniela and I, the main thing that you want to see and visit is the Leaning Tower of Pisa. And this is where we are. Finally here guys, Leaning Tower of Pisa. It's a lot smaller than what I thought. It's so weird. It's beautiful though, don't get me wrong. But just seeing a tower like lean towards the side, it's it's unique. Obviously the details are incredible. It's beautiful like I said, but it is a little bit odd seeing a tower like lean to the side. But um, check this out. And then of course, everybody comes to take the world famous picture with the Leaning Tower of Pisa. And obviously, I couldn't be the exception. I gotta be honest, it's not that easy to snap the picture, but here it is. To come and snap the picture with the Leaning Tower of Pisa, it's free, but if you wanna go up um, the tower, there is a price for that and the tickets, you buy them here, or you can also get them online, if I'm not mistaken. So right behind me is the ticket box where you can purchase the tickets to go inside the tower and head all the way to the top. If you wanna do that, it's about 20 euros. They do offer different packages. So if you wanna visit the tower, plus the chapel or the cathedral that's right next to it, along with other museums, that's about 27 euros. And the other, I guess, attractions are about seven, 10 euros each. If you make it all the way out here, you know, you might as well make the investment and head all the way to the top. Have that awesome view from the top of the Leaning Tower of Pisa. And just the experience of going up. Unfortunately, I don't have the time just because in about an hour, two hours or so, we're heading to visit Florence for the afternoon and then head back to yeah. Rome. But again, if you have the time, why not? It's a really nice day in Pisa today. And just again, the ambience with all the people, the tourists and, and just in general, the, the Italian people around helping you. It's just nice, it's, it's pretty cool. If you get hungry, there are plenty of options here um, in terms of like restaurants or places to get some ice cream, something to drink. Pretty nice, pretty nice. But okay, now we're heading to Florence. Guys, welcome to Firenze, better known as Florence. Check this out.
Florence, the capital city of the Tuscany region and a UNESCO World Heritage Site, has an estimated population of over 700,000 people. The city was the epicenter of the Renaissance period which occurred between the 14th and 17th centuries. Needless to say, Florence is home to many masterpieces of Renaissance art, architecture, and monuments. UNESCO estimates that 60% of the world's most significant artwork can be found in Florence. No wonder why the city welcomes an estimated 10 to 16 million tourists every year. It doesn't matter where you go in Italy, you need to always have some gelato. I did lime and strawberry gelato. It is delicious. Mm. We just made it to the Santa Maria di Fiori Cathedral here in Florence. It's massive. It's insane. The amount of detail, the, the amount of work just from the outside is incredible. It is an unbelievable feeling being here just to give you guys a little bit of an idea of how massive the cathedral, the entrance, just the entire thing is. Check this out. And then obviously the line to get in, it's pretty long, but good news, it is free. You don't have to pay anything unless you want to enter some other museums around the area, other attractions, then you would have to pay for those, but not to go inside the actual cathedral. All right, so awesome, awesome, awesome. I'll take you guys inside in just a little bit. And so far, Florence, you are beautiful. The Santa Maria del Fiore Cathedral is one of the largest churches in the world. It measures 153 meters in length, 90 meters wide, and 90 meters high from the floor to the base of the dome lantern. The name Santa Maria del Fiore, or Our Lady of the Flower, is allusive to the name of the city Florentia, or the city of flowers destined to bloom, in addition to its emblem, the Florentine lily. Without a doubt, the most famous images of the cathedral are from its dome, built by Filippo Brunelleschi between 1420 and 1436, and of the beautiful Giotto's Bell Tower, a true masterpiece of the Italian Gothic style. From Pisa's main train station, Pisa Centrale, you'll need to hop on another train to arrive in beautiful Firenze. The train ride from Pisa to Florence is about an hour long and the ticket cost us about 9 euros per person. Keep in mind, the train costs depend on your travel dates and how far in advance you purchase the train tickets. You also have to make sure you are arriving at the Santa Maria Novella station in Florence, as this one is the closest train station to the city's downtown. Alright guys, welcome to Ponte del Vecchio. Now here, it's very famous because of the jewelry shops that you can find everywhere. The Ponte Vecchio or Old Bridge is a medieval stone arch bridge over the Arno River. Besides being famous for having tons of jewelry shops, it also happens to be the only bridge in Florence that didn't suffer any damage during the Second World War. If you only had a day to visit both Pisa and Florence, this would be my ideal itinerary for you guys to follow, to do the different things to see at least the most important things to see because obviously in both Pisa and Fidenza or Florence there are amazing, amazing things. They're both filled with incredible things to see and to explore. But again, if you only have 24 hours, this would be the best. From Ponte del Vecchio, I'll see you guys in the next video. Oh, wait, before I forget, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, activate the bell so you guys get notified when all my videos come out. And if you enjoyed this vlog, if you enjoyed this quick Pisa Firenze itinerary, 
hit the thumbs up. Okay, now from Ponte del Vecchio in Firenze, I'll see you guys in the next video.